Hello. Hi. Welcome, Welcome back. back. <laughs> <laughs> to um, wandering thoughts under house arrest. Well, no, well, this that's a little stay harsh. in place. Quarantine. Sh- quarantine. Well, we're not quarantine. Quarant- well, <laughs> wandering thoughts while stuck in place. Yeah. That work. That works. I guess. I mean, we can leave, yeah, but we can't leave. Kind of. It's like a southern. Please don't leave your home. Yeah. So far, it's been <laughs> it's been pretty southern about. Yeah. Please don't leave your home. Mm-hmm. So, um, what's our topic for today, sir? Biblical marriage. Biblical marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So marriage. Marriage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah. Um. We've learned a lot about this. We have learned so much. So much over and the how past we were year. Yeah. I think we were pretty lucky with how we started mm, this well, we journey. We can't say lucky, can we? You're right. <laughs> it's providence. I think we had a lot of providence for it to have gone the way that it did for as long as it did. Mm-hmm. Before we happened upon yeah. the truth, is that probably yeah. the best way to put it? We were kind of secularly s- set up. God kind of set us up beforehand, and but when we didn't even know what was happening. No, we, we didn't. We were just angry about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So biblical marriage. Um, how about I let you start? So I, I want to start off. Um, First and foremost, uh, in Genesis 1, 27 and 28. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And this is the first instance. Institution? Mm-hmm. Institution seems like a word that fits this in a way. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so he created marriage. Mm-hmm. And said it was good. Mm-hmm. Um, this was all before the fall. Mm-hmm. So he created, I guess you could maybe, he created it before what we understand church to be. So he created yeah. this before the church mm-hmm. that we have come to know. Yeah. The, um, yeah, the yeah. institution of marriage and then subsequently family is the model that he puts forth. Puts for, forth. For the church. Well, yeah. You know, hierarchy yeah. later this is on. The first union. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. And coming together of, of people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I have notes. Forgive me. Uh, uh, about a year ago, we converted to Christianity. Uh, biblical Christianity uh, and in doing so found that the only way to have a good marriage a truly godly marriage was to have a biblical one Um, this just means uh, that we learned God's plan for marriage uh, and that it's a better plan a way better plan um, than anyone that we could have conceived Uh, we thought that we had a decent marriage I think by secular standards, um, we did have a decent yeah, marriage. But before. to be honest, the bad part is, is I think even by Christian standards today, we probably, we probably had a good marriage before. Good, yeah. yeah. Well, see, that's the statistically uh, about fifty percent of marriages fail. overall fail in the in church or out of the church. Yeah, in the church, it's fifty percent. Yeah. It's the same as the secular so, world. So what that says is that people aren't 
even proclaiming Christians aren't following God's plan of what a marriage should be. They're not being set apart. Yeah. Um, I think the culture has kind of uh, infiltrated the churches Mm -hmm. a lot on on this issue Um, and has been for a while now Mm -hmm. because you really kind of have to dig to find marriage. I mean, I, mean, well, I shouldn't just, say that. You, you have to study the Bible to really find God's plan for biblical marriage because it's not typically being taught. Yeah, it's not being taught. That's that's yeah. kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah. Not that you have to dig necessarily. but yeah. No, it's there. It's, like you it's just there read from it, the it's beginning. There. It's like, oh, okay, that's how it's supposed to be. From the very beginning. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But yeah, no one's, no one's taught that. I mean, and, and we went through... Well, we had to go through marriage counseling at the church that we got married at. Well, by one of the associate by the pastor, pa- by the pa- an associate pastor. Or yeah, something like we that. didn't get married at that church. That, that pastor was marrying yeah. us. I, I don't remember if he even asked us if we knew what the gospel was. I don't remember anything about we the didn't gospel. Have a gospel presentation. We didn't have a biblical. He didn't talk about biblical marriage. It, it, it was, was more just seeing if we were on the same. A totally secular point of view. Page and. That was a Lutheran church. Um, yes, but they weren't associated with the Lutheran church. I know. That's just where we got married because yeah. it was pretty. It was very pretty. <laughs> it was a very pretty church. That was another thing. I, I, w- <laughs> I would guess. Is uh, it? Is it Christian of you to marry in a church? Absolutely. Yeah. Is it Christian of you to marry in a church simply because it's pretty? I would say probably not. I'm just happy now well, that we could, got married in a church. <laughs> looking back, because I was looking a, anywhere. It some didn't people matter. get married in a barn because they think that it's pretty. Yeah, it's called a venue. Yeah, but because I was I was hunting a venue, mm-hmm. and I like his history and historical yeah. buildings and things like mm-hmm. that, and this looked like a castle, yeah. so. That made me happy, and it was beautiful mm-hmm. inside, and it was old, and mm-hmm. it had Tremendous some amount presence of to it. Mm-hmm. I did. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, I didn't start out looking for a church, necessarily, but I kept walking into hotels and going, the carpet's ugly, and turning around and leaving. <laughs> My mom wasn't very happy about this, because... That took a very, very long weekend of walking in and walking out of a lot of churches. Or not churches. Yeah, <laughs> not, venues. Uh, of hotels and other venues. <laughs> so, Genesis 24. Uh, Genesis 224. 2, you have to remember that. Uh, that was yeah. on our wedding program. Uh, yeah, Providence was, as well, uh, yeah. I would say. Uh, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother... And be joined to his wife, and they shall become one. So, all you fellas, sit on your mom's couch. If you don't have to. (laughs) Um, This is one, this one, this one thing is the most important uh, question to ask. You got hung up on your nose. I got ahead of myself. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. We'll back up for a minute then. Okay. We'll just edit that out. No, we won't. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Mm -hmm. So, the first part of that is, like, plainly obvious. Yeah. Right. You, You go off and you start your own family. Um, you get married, you start your own family. Now, the one flesh thing, um, I think gets, I don't want to say passed over, but looked at differently. Um, How so? Well, you have people who have, you, you have married couples who have separate bank accounts. Yeah. They, they live separate single lives. lives. 
they live as single people. Mm-hmm. They just come home and kind of roommate together. They room together. Well, you also have some that, I guess... And I mean, like... Like, they, they go and do stuff together as couples, like when other couples mm-hmm. are involved. But yeah. they have their own... Sin- not necessarily single mm-hmm. friends, but friends they do things with singularly, I guess. Well, I, I'm talking more about if you're the husband and you're going off and you're, like, drinking all the time with your buddies and hanging out and all that stuff. And then every once in a while hanging out with your wife yeah. and having a movie night or a date night. And then the wife is doing the same thing, going and hanging out with her girlfriends, drinking and carrying on. And then every once in a while, wanting to be romantic with her husband and and all of that stuff. Let's not even bring in the fact if they have kids, too, and they're living that way. That's even harder. I think going out, at least from my perspective, I don't really have (laughs) any friends to go drink with, which is totally fine with me. Um, But... We've always enjoyed doing things together. Yeah. We never liked going off and being separate. I I make a joke about this being the verse that we picked out to be on our wedding program Mm -hmm. as providential. But we always, like I remember like on the off chance where it was, you know, I had a friend or somebody call and say, hey, would you like to meet up or something? You know, maybe they were an out of town person I didn't get to see very often. Mm -hmm. And they called and said, would you like to meet up? I would feel guilty going without you. Like, I did, you know, I wanted yeah. to see them. They're my friends, and I care mm-hmm. about them very much. But yeah. I don't like doing things without you. Yeah, same here. Um, and now that we have but, our little one, yeah. I don't like doing things yeah. <laughs> without her being included. Um, that, that's, that's, I mean, yeah. That's probably the point that I was trying to get it at, get to that I forgot, and then you reminded me, <laughs> is if you're going off and you're hanging out with your buddies all the time, then that's what's most important to you. Can I pause for a second? Mm-hmm. Because as we have been learning about this, this verse mm-hmm. has come up with some of the people that yeah. we watch. Um, keep in mind, check out our uh playlists because we actually have one that Mm -hmm. we've been putting together on biblical marriage from some very good people um and they're very it's very hard to find Mm -hmm. very good people talking about marriage um but when they bring this verse up most i haven't seen a woman talking about it Mm -hmm. and i mean obviously it says for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother i i get why they concentrate on the husband with this Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, if a wife is doing the same, if if she is if she is not willing to leave and become one with her husband, mm-hmm. it applies. Yeah. It's kind of my thing. Like if if I I mean don't get me wrong, I love my parents and I have a great relationship with my parents. But when we got married, mm-hmm. you're my person. Yeah. I'm not calling my mom or my dad yeah. for them to make the decision for me or to help make the decision with me. You were the person to do mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, and I think that you have a lot of, I don't know how it kind of came to be, but you have that a lot on both sides, yeah. guys and girls, where the families are still very much mm-hmm. involved in everyday life. I guess that works. Yeah, so I may it would be there's a I think there's a difference in and maybe this is all maybe this has nothing to do with what you're talking about, but say if if a guy's trying to refinish a bathroom, right? Mm-hmm. And he has a question and he calls his father. Yeah. And asks, asks a advice. question and says, okay. Or he calls his father-in-law and says, hey, what do you think about, about this? That's that's one thing. If a wife says, what are you doing? Well, I'm refinished to the bathroom. 
let me call my dad <laughs> and ask his advice. Do you see? That's totally different. Dis- <laughs> That's a little different. Yeah. That's a little different. Um, um, yeah, I, yeah, that kind of applies, but, and I'm not saying that we aren't supposed to care about one another. We're told to honor our parents yeah. and, and everything like yeah. that way. I'm not trying to downplay your uh, family, but mm. Genesis 2.24, and it's referenced in the New Testament as well, mm. tells you that you're supposed to be one unit. Husband and wife are to be yeah. one. One. And that means Mm -hmm. (laughs) that they can be your support system, Mm -hmm. but they shouldn't, I don't know, I I feel like we have such family units now that are, I don't want to say over-involved or over-connected, I can't figure out a good Mm -hmm. term. It's more involved than generations before in a different way. Yeah. It's not in a supporting way. It's in a like like you're like a a net a network of people, not like your support system. It's yeah. not just that. It's more than that mm-hmm. for a lot of people, and that extends to friends too. Mm-hmm. Where if something happens to you, I would automatically call you mm-hmm. or text you if something happened that in regards to me. You're yeah. you're my yeah. person first or foremost. And if I didn't get you, guess what? I would wait to talk to you. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't go down the list of people yeah. I knew to call and talk to them mm-hmm. because you're my person. Yeah. I, I wouldn't let friends or family usurp your position yeah. for yeah. us. It's same, like same here. There's, I think there's... There, I think there's certainly a difference between okay, there they say there are things and we pretty much talked about everything in both of our lives. Yeah. But let's say there was something that was in my past that wasn't criminal, but that I didn't necessarily want to talk about. I didn't feel that it was important. Okay. Right. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to make up. But something. <laughs> insignificant like I was thinking about like I stole a candy bar but that would be criminal and that would defeat the purpose right girlfriend stuff like past girlfriends or something or, like know, there's I a difference it's between kind of criminal, not but... not telling your wife about every girlfriend that you had or the one girlfriend that you had that you and the things that y'all went gallivanting and doing and actually having secrets Purposely not discussing things with your wife because of a fear of judgment. Well, there's a twofold problem there. The obvious one, of course, being keeping secrets. You're not one flesh if you're yeah. keeping secrets. The other problem is if you're especially if you're the man doing it. Yeah. Because you're the leader of the house. Mm-hmm. You're the leader of the family. And yeah. if you're not talking to your wife because you're afraid... <laughs> yeah, you're not much of a man. <laughs> you got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Because it's your job to lead the wife. I mean, mm-hmm. let's be honest. You know, you just went feet first into learning stuff and have taught yeah. me way more. And I rely on you. I mean, I mean, how many questions a day do I ask you yeah. to go over stuff with me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's not because it's not because you're inferior or less intelligent no. or anything like that. I'm literally most of the day studying while yeah. you're chasing Bellamy around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I yeah. just have more time. Yeah, and I'm supposed to be doing that. Yes, and I value I'm, it. Very I'm, much. I'm supposed to be the person that you can come to first and foremost to be able to answer questions that you don't have. And there's also those times where I'm like, mm, let me go over this with Courtney. Yeah, let we go over stuff together. I mean, yeah. and we learn together. Mm-hmm. 
And then there's other times when you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, and you go and find the answer for me. Because let's be honest, I'm not going to remember it in 10 minutes, and uh, more than likely I'm not going to have the opportunity to go looking for it. Um, But I know I kind of derailed you a little bit. But I, I have to say that's one thing that I haven't seen in a lot of the videos that we've been reviewing Mm -hmm. and learning from, all of which are great teachers that we have um, added to the playlist. Um, But they're all men that are teaching about biblical marriage, which I think is fantastic because they're all pastors, and they should be all Mm -hmm. men. (laughs) All men. And I'm going to, people are going to be mad at me for saying that pastors need to be all men. We'll talk about that another day. (laughs) And the fact that I didn't used to believe that all pastors needed to be men. Um, but I haven't seen a woman talk on this passage and Mm -hmm. ultimately it is one flesh. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean men continue with their life as it was. That doesn't mean women continue with their life as it was. Mm -hmm. You come to be one. I mean, we, even with friends Mm -hmm. that we've, people we've known that have come in and out of our life for a while yeah. over the years if we've met an acquaintance or somebody mm-hmm. and one of us had a feeling yeah, you know like something's just not right with this acquaintance of ours it doesn't really mm-hmm. fit with yeah. what we're learning or with our life we listen to each other and we talk to each other about that mm-hmm. and we respect each other with yeah. that enough that most of the time, if it's a hinky feeling, Mm -hmm. we always go see that person together. Or, more often than not, that person has somehow ended up not being in the circles around us anymore for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important that you talk about the other relationships that you have with other people. Mm -hmm. In a marriage, in, yeah. in your own marriage, because I mean, yeah. if you let me just bring around any person I mm-hmm. I meet, that influences you and can hurt not only our witness, it could hurt our child, mm-hmm. it could hurt our relationship. It, you know, yeah. could, it could put a strain on there. So we've always tried, even back before this. Yeah, we always talked about people that came into our lives Mm -hmm. and if one of us had a feeling we always took steps and measures and that was before little one Mm -hmm. Uh, now (laughs) those steps and measures are oh my goodness there's so many more steps and measures and it is so difficult Mm -hmm. trying to discern but it's worth it it is worth it. It's hard. <laughs> it is very hard. But it's worth it. Um, basically, like, first and foremost, even it's a bad idea, e- even in a secular marriage, to have completely separate bank accounts that either of your payroll goes into. I, I don't think that that's financially... Sound. Sound. That... It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It also allows you to hide things. Yeah. Well, it's the same difference. It's the same difference as if you're like a boyfriend and a girlfriend are living together, like cohabitating. They have an apartment and they're living together. And they've been living together for eight years or nine years or ten years or however long. Sorry. Why don't you just get married? Yeah. What you've done is you've you've played house, but without actually committing to the relationship. You've left yourself a way out of the relationship. Um, the issue is is that by not getting married you and doing all those things, out. you're fornicating. Yeah. That's what that is. Yeah. You're, it's a sin. <laughs> Um, and you're not supposed to be doing that. Um, but that's from a psychological perspective. I mean, that's really, I'm not a psychologist, 
but really what you're doing is you're going you're 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 leaving the door cracked so you can go well I'm not committed so if I if I want to leave later on I can leave mm -hmm. which means you're not committed to the relationship yeah. but I'd also like to point out in the world that we live in right now the culture we live in mm -hmm. church or no church obviously the numbers mirror each other mm -hmm. on this issue what does that say when marriage has already been reduced to nothing more than a piece of paper? Yeah. What does it say when you're not willing to commit to signing to a piece of paper? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody loves a wedding. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, yeah. everybody looks at it as just a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Now, it's no longer you before God making vows to a person. Mm -hmm. That's not primary. The primary is the legal aspect yeah. of it. I have a contract. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't. <laughs> no. I think there's a reason that it says to have Christ at the center of your marriage. Mm -hmm. And if you do, then the piece of paper is just for the government's records. It's not for ours. Yeah. <laughs> what matters are the vows between <laughs> you in front of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean that's evidence when when people take when they, when they take their vows and they, you know, they, I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. I'm sure you do. I do uh, not. But, I absolutely uh, do you know, not. For better, for worse. For richer, for, for richer, poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. As long as you both shall live, or mm -hmm. till death do yeah. you part. Now, depending. fun fact. Oh. Um, actually, that's not a fact. It's from Scripture. Um, so it's not a fact? The Pharisees asked Jesus. So it about, is a fact. About the, it is a fact, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, <laughs> fair point. Um, like, they ask, so they're talking about this woman, and it's a, a parable. She, she's married a man, and he's dead. So her brother marries her. What? His brother marries her. His yes, yeah, sir. Not her brother. His brother marries her. To, you know, to as, follow Jewish law. To follow Jewish law, and then he dies. Went through so seven on, brothers. Seven brothers, and they ask, "Who will she be married to?" In heaven. In heaven, and Jesus says, "Basically, you're missing the point. You're like yeah, no one is married in heaven. Yeah, everyone is like angels." Mm-hmm. In heaven. Yeah. There's no marriage. Nope. Marriage is an earthly institution that God gives us. One, for... To help to us. To help better understand the relationship between parents and children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God's relationship with us. Nowhere near the same but better understanding of that relationship. And then also the better understanding uh, between Christ and his church, the bride and the bridegroom. Yeah. And I don't remember who it was we were listening to. It may have been Todd Friel. I don't remember. Richard but he Radio. was talking about how there was a princess or queen and the king had to go away. And he left the queen, this beautiful queen, in the care of the steward. Well, this is from the Bible. You're probably right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably I so am. Much stuff. Um, it's, it's talking about a king leaves mm -hmm. his wife, who is absolutely beautiful. I believe it's, mm -hmm. it's in one of the letters to the New Testament. And, or maybe it's not. I don't See, remember. See, now it. I can't remember. It it's, may be. It's so parable though. But. Um. Anyway. Yeah. So he leaves her in the care of the steward. It's Paul Washer. And. It's Paul Washer. Yeah. And. The people, white linen, the pure, pe white yeah, pure white linen, the people love this queen and everything, but after a while, they start to lose interest. Um, they start caring less and less and less about the, their beautiful queen. 
So in this, her modesty. Yeah, in her modesty. So the steward begins to dress her up in culturally appropriate clothing, uh, in colors, and it becomes more and more risque. Extravagance. Extravagance to be appealing to the people, to keep their interest, and, and all of that stuff. And the question was, what do you think the king will do to you, to the steward when he returns and sees what the steward has done to his queen? Yeah, that was Paul Washer. Mm -hmm. um, Twofold there. One topic we're talking about now, another we're going to have to save for another day. Yeah. Um, The, the one we'll say for another day is what will Christ say of what the church has become uh, mm -hmm. to appease the world and the culture and been dressed up mm -hmm. to look like the culture yeah. in so many ways. That's the one for another day. Hmm. I know, because you'll dive into it. That's why <laughs> I stop you. Um, but as far as marriage, I mean, that really applies to women are called to be modest in the New Testament. Well, in general. Um, meek and humble. Meek and meek humble, and humble spirit. spirit. Um, <laughs> I almost said hungry. Hungry? Are you hungry? A little bit, yeah. Okay. I can eat. You usually can. <laughs> But um, more than more than the modesty, that story, which now that I think about it, is seems more Paul Washer. I think you're right. I don't think it was in the New Testament. But like you say, it all kind of starts to run together because mm -hmm. we go from video talking about the Bible to reading the Bible to, reading the Bible, to video to reading talking books, about the Bible to reading, and reading yeah. books about it. So. I, I hate to say that it all starts to run together, but we've been learning so much mm -hmm. on our um, stuck in place time mm -hmm. that it has kind of <laughs> started to run together, which is good. We've mm -hmm. had that extra time. But aside from modesty, that story, and aside from the application to the church of today, mm -hmm. um, for me, What will happen if a married woman is not being taught by her husband about biblical things, mm -hmm. being being modest, being an example? Mm -hmm. um, but more than that, not being worldly. Yep. If I couldn't imagine how hard this journey would be on your own as a single person. I couldn't imagine how hard, I mean, we know how hard it is being married and we're both working on it together. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine how much harder it would be to basically be going at this singularly in a marriage mm. where you don't have the support of your spouse, yeah. where you're trying to figure it out on your own, um, either your wife's not involved or your husband's not involved or they're not interested, maybe they're part of a church, but they're just not, you know, mm -hmm. they don't feel they need to read it. Um, we've kind of gotten to the point <sighs> where we take what yeah. is said from the pulpit. Yeah. And we don't we don't read it, even though we're told that we're supposed mm -hmm. to know what they're saying and yeah, know if it's true. That's the biggest, the, the, the biggest sin committed by professing Christians is idolatry. It is that you sit and you listen to a pastor say these things and let's be honest more often than not they're not telling the truth you know I saw a quote the other day that said don't make a pope of your pastor yeah I don't remember who said that now but they you what you do is exactly what I did is you form this idea of God in your head that allows you to get away with the things that you want to get away with and oftentimes you don't even know you're doing it. But you get, that's what happens when you get half Bible, Bible verses, 
and half half these and half that when you get the when you get scripture without context you can do whatever you want with it this is how word of faith and prosperity gospel and 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 folks health and wealth health and wealth and, and stuff like that that's how they get away with what they get away with because they they'll take a snippet they know that you're not going to go read it they're they're banking on your ignorance so what they do is they, they'll take this verse and then they'll take this verse from over here and this verse from over here and they do a topical sermon where they want to talk about health and wealth and then they'll just pull bits and pieces to help support the sermon that's about health and wealth. When if you go and you read the part where the Bible says, worship me and I will give you all of these things, as they have been given to me. It's Luke. Mm-hmm. I always say it backwards. I think it's 4-6. Mm-hmm. It's when Jesus is being tempted. And if you read the verse where Satan is tempting him and offering him all of the world's kingdoms. Mm-hmm. Um, if you just leave off the little caveat at the beginning where it says, And the devil said... Mm-hmm. And you read everything that's after it, just as it is. You know, the dot, dot, dot leading into the verse. Yeah. If you don't know that the devil's the one talking there, yeah. who's that on? Yeah. It, it'll be on whoever's speaking to you, yeah, for sure, but it's also yeah. on you because you don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe that's the thing there, too, You can you, that maybe we can get into with that some other time because I will go on and on rant. and on. Yeah, well, is not the rant, you, you tangent. That, that's exactly what he says. Exactly what he says. Worship me and I will give you all these things and more as they have been given to me. Mm-hmm. I will give you the world. The devil says, I will give you the world. And I'm not saying that if you're not worshiping the biblical the biblical God, if you're not worshiping God in the way that He says that you should worship, that you're worshiping the devil. It's not yeah. what I'm saying. But you're certainly doing exactly what He wants you to do. Well, if you're in if having, you allow the worldly I, distractions, yeah, in having an idolatrous view of God. You're certainly doing exactly what he wants you to do. You know. If you think if you pray hard enough, it, because somebody's told you, if you think that you can pray hard enough, mm-hmm. and every whim or wish you've ever had will mm-hmm. come true, God's not a genie. Yeah. And it, everything is for his glory. And if it can glorify him, Mm -hmm. wonderful. That's wonderful. But I can tell you when we started on this journey, it started out with me praying something that I hoped, which was (laughs) for me to be able to be home with our daughter. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I was praying for it to be five years in the future on my five-year plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he answered that lickety split, yeah. and it was sudden, and it was difficult, and it was hard. Mm-hmm. But it put us on this path, mm-hmm. and it got us on our way, mm-hmm. in a way, yeah. to where we are now, as hard as it was. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. It was not. Um, <laughs> so, it was not. Yeah. But I hope that through it, it'll bring glory to him. I don't mm-hmm. think it would have happened otherwise. I'm sure it will. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I do, I do. Before we move on, since we're mm-hmm. kind of tangent, tangenting on this anyway, I would like to challenge people. Anybody watching? Most churches do live streams. Most churches do recordings. They have some some version mm-hmm. where you can pause it. Yeah. Um, and there are a lot of I, I'm not trying to say anything bad there are a lot of well-meaning pastors 
and they've just been taught this way to do topical stuff. I get that. I'm not saying one way or another. But I challenge you for your own pastor and any pastor you have a question about. Don't just take our word for what we say in our playlist is good people to listen to. Yeah. Scrutinize them yourself. Um, take a sermon, whether it's recent or you, mm-hmm. you pick one for time, whatever. Pick it apart. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't tell you the amount of pastors that we have done this with. It's like an experiment that we have done on several different churches, whether they're local or huge or whatever. Yeah. Where we sit down with a <laughs> one of us with the remote for Paul's and, mm-hmm. and the other one writing down so that we can research. Yeah. Almost every single one that we have done that was topical, they bounced around all over the place mm-hmm. with verses that weren't listed anywhere like half the time they didn't even come up on the screen so if you weren't able to pause it if you were sitting there in the audience live he said it if you didn't catch it oh he said a bible verse there was no yeah. there was no looking it up yeah and the other thing is like and if, the context of these verses a lot of the time mm-hmm. is not what they are saying yeah. or they're using like a tiny little yeah little bit of a verse to, to or, try to make it fit or or they're using a verse they'll take a verse and then they'll read it out of a bad translation oh yeah and literally it means you pull something totally different from it out of the bad translation then you would pull out of like a word for word translation yeah we, um, we highly recommend um New American Standard. Eastern Standard is yeah, good. ESV, um, NASB. New King James. And then, I mean, if you're just a hardcore... I mean, I grew yeah. up on King James, so I'm used to the yeah. Fs and these and thous. So mm-hmm. I kind of... I memorize that easier. But for studying, we always use the uh, New yeah. American mm-hmm. Standard. But those are the best yeah. versions definitely, from all of our research. Definitely a word for word. Yeah. Not a thought for thought. Translation, no. um, and you have to be careful with your study Bibles, yeah. Too, because there's a lot of footnotes and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's somebody. Yeah, like for instance, putting, when you're reading in Job and you read about behemoth. behemoth, and it says possibly a hippopotamus or an elephant. After you read the part where it has a tail like a cedar, like a cedar, yeah, like a cedar tree. If you've nope. ever seen a hippopotamus or an elephant. They don't have tails like cedar trees. Nope. So that's not what they're talking about. Um, they were so tiny, I was surprised when they actually had tails. Like, I didn't even realize, realize you don't really that think they about had it. tails. <laughs> you don't think about them actually having tails. And, like, the best I could this come up with when I heard feature. that was, are they saying he was confused and didn't know that the tail was on its face? Like, <laughs> yeah. but... God is totally confused when he's talking oh, about yeah. the animal that he created. <laughs> yeah, yep. I'm sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But so so just be careful of that. And to even for yeah. any any parents watching, um, you have to be very careful about the children's Bibles and mm-hmm. the children's books and, and media of any kind. But you even have to be careful about the children's Bibles that you read. I actually had several um I have several. I, I've kept them for now uh, because I'm going to use them as a compare and contrast when she gets older mm-hmm. of why this isn't a good one to read. Um, because I'm a nerd like that. <laughs> but <laughs> I, even before I came to this realization, I remember reading one of those children's Bibles to her and like I stopped mid-page. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is bad. Yeah, this is wait, this is this right. is bad <laughs> theology. Like, this is yeah. bad. I'm setting her up to be confused, mm-hmm. and I don't want to set her up to be confused. Well, I have I mean, a hard enough even, figuring, hard enough time figuring out all my own. Like we started learning about. I mean, we can do we can do a whole other episode on just what we've done for like as far as Bellamy is concerned, but um, yeah. 
Like, what do you mean? Her school? Like, her, things school? that we've changed. Like, her learning? we used to... Uh, Noah's Ark. Like, the kid version of Noah's Ark gives her a wrong idea of, of what, it what, was. what it was. It's a, First of all, the story isn't about an old dude building and a, a bunch boat of animals. and saving all the animals. That's not what the story is about. That's a part of the story. The story is about the fact that humanity became so wicked that there was nothing but evil in their hearts. And God regretted so making So God us. separated one family and saved them and saved the animals mm -hmm. and destroyed everyone else. Everything else. Everything else. That's what the story's about. And then you and then on top of that you have this cartoon version of an ark in a children's Bible or a children's biblical storybook with animals poking out and, and all of that stuff. It's it's yeah. not accurate to what the Bible says and the Bible actually gives measurements for the ark. Yeah. Go watch An answers in Genesis. They're fantastic. Um, lots of links. We also have playlists on God and science. We have a playlist about Noah's Ark and the Flood. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they have so much great resources. We actually have the the little people Noah's Ark thing that we we got that when she was a baby. I can't remember if we bought it or if it was a gift. Mm -hmm. But like we don't call it the Ark. We call it a boat. It's a boat. We call it a boat. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it looks like a cartoon thing, but it's, yeah. it's you know, it did give us pairs of animals. So yeah. I can use that to teach her about pairs of animals and different things like that. And I now I realize, actually, like, there were two cheetahs and there were two lions that came with the kit. And, like, when we talk about this stuff, I'm like, now, it was only a kind, so there wouldn't have been multiple kitties like this. Yeah, what, uh, two kitties. Two kitties. Yeah. Like, you want, do you want the cheetah on here with the, with the boy lion, or do you? Mm -hmm. Do you want the tiger to go this time, or do you want yeah. like like we? What do they call it? Um, it was, uh, family yeah, level. So that would be like for dogs, it would be Canada, and for cats, it would be canine, you know, feline. What was it? Feline day. Feline day. I'm working on Latin. Give Felines. Me, give me a chance. And canids. Yeah. So probably a large cat species, and wolves. Yeah. Couple elephants. Probably one was hairy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's a fallacy when they say, Well, he couldn't have fit all the species on the ark. Well he didn't. Watch Answers in Genesis. Yeah. Otherwise we'll be on this topic because for a very long that, time. Well, I mean that's something that we <laughs> we just need to make another uh, another episode about that. Let's get back to marriage. Yeah, yeah. Because you'll talk <laughs> about that for the entire time. Yeah. Um so one flesh. One flesh being you are both included. You both you in, you support each other. Um, I I support her. She supports me. Honestly, she does most of the supporting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about but, that. But we don't make just as an example like we don't make a decision usually without consulting the other one. No. I, I don't think we've done that for a very long time. And the I times, don't remember the last time. I don't I did. either. I don't either. But I think certainly like if I need if I need to make a decision about the truck or, or something like that and I just go do it. Yeah. Like we don't have a fight over it. No. Like, we know there's no argument. You're like, okay, well, yeah, that seems like it needs to be done. And vice versa. But usually, for the most part, when we're making decisions together, um, as far as... Big decisions. Yeah. Even little decisions, yeah. because I'm sure I bug you all the time. Yeah. About them. <laughs> um, and, I mean, even when it is something small, if it's a decision we make on our own, typically there's a text message involved mm -hmm. or, a, or a phone call going, hey... You know, I decided to take uh, Bellamy to a friend's house or something like that, you know, if you're not home. And I, yeah. I need to make the decision. I can't rely on 
yeah. waiting for you to be off work or on lunch or whatever mm. to, to make the decision. Um, mm. But we also trust each other mm-hmm. to make decisions yeah. on the spot if necessary. Mm-hmm. Like that. I mean, obviously that's not a huge decision from the day-to-day decisions, but we, we trust each other with that because I couldn't imagine... I mean, it kind of goes back to the two-person or two separate bank accounts. Yeah. Could you imagine not communicating with one another on bills that you now share? Yeah. Who's going to pay out of which account? Yeah. Who's going to resent the other because they had plans to buy shoes with that Mm -hmm. money? (laughs) Or a new hat. Yeah. You know? Because they weren't planning on paying it, but the other person wasn't planning on paying it. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, key, and this is an absolute key to um, having a, a, a marriage, I think that the, the marriage that is talked about in Scripture, um, the one that God wants us to have, is, is Christ the most important thing in your life? Yeah. First of all, from a Christian, uh, even if you're single, um, if Christ isn't the most important thing in your life, um, then perhaps you have a little bit further to go, some more work to do. Um, the most absolute important thing in your life should be Christ. Um, and your relationship and with your, Him and salvation mm-hmm. through Him. Yeah, because if you, if you don't have a good relationship with Christ, if you don't know Him through His Word, and know how he wants you to live your life uh, and how you're to worship and how you're to conduct yourself as a Christian, um, then how can you expect to have um, a, the marriage that he wants you to have? You can't. Um, so Christ is the most important thing in my life. Um, he's the most important thing in Courtney's life, and thus he becomes the most important thing in the marriage. Like Courtney was talking about before, it must be very hard for someone who has converted and their spouse hasn't converted. So Christ has become the most important thing in their life, but it can't become the most important thing in the marriage because the yeah, spa- their spouse isn't converted not yet. Not interested or... Or has not. it, yeah, or, or, you know, and I was going to say, or hasn't has an idolatrous view, but that would be unconverted, so they're not converted yet. <laughs> Um, and that, that's, that's, I think that's a a big issue is that a lot of people who go to church and grew up, maybe grew up in the church or whatever, they're, and are false converts. We were. They don't know that they're false converts. No. We didn't know that we were. So... We were lucky enough that we actually sat down and went. Nobody came to us and said, "Look, you're being idolatrous. You're 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 not Christian." Um, we actually went. No, we think we might not be Christian. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go read the Bible. Well, I mean, we we tried church and stuff too, and like. Yeah, we were always that like, wasn't, there was something that didn't work. something here. There's something wrong here. And and come to find um, out, it it was the culture permeating, mm-hmm. yeah, permeating it, and, and and we just it always felt like it, it was off, mm-hmm. wasn't quite right. Yeah. And we weren't. Who was it that said? Um, I can't remember. There's been several pastors that we listened to that were talking about the people in uh, churches spiritually starving. Mm-hmm. And we were, we were, we were starving, and we were starving in church and out of church. We just didn't know what we were looking for. Yeah, we were ignorant to. We filled it with other stuff. Yeah, I we mean, knew that something Jordan was Peterson, off. Jordan uh, Peterson. We didn't know what we didn't know. Did the Jordan Peterson book and stuff, which helped, but it wasn't that actually. Him talking yeah. around God kind of got us to talking yeah. about God, yeah. and and helped us in a way. So, Mm -hmm. but, um, I actually shared an analogy kind of about this that I had the other night with a friend 
Um, so anyone who is part of the church or whether they're false convert or convert believes, you know, believes they've found Christ. Mm-hmm. We're sheep and we follow the good shepherd. Okay. But what happens when you're kind of, you become, you, you know, you're a sheep, you've joined the good shepherd's flock. Maybe you're new, maybe you're not. But you just kind of lollygag and not. No, you're not really concerned with keeping up with the herd. You're not really concerned with being close to the shepherd, whether you know to or not. Right? And then all of a sudden you look up, and you can't really tell where the herd is. So, you look around, kind of keep going about your business, trying to go in the direction you remember that they went. And then all of a sudden you see more sheep. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, that's got to be them. They look like my herd. So you tag along. Because you were lollygagging along and not paying attention and not doing what the Good Shepherd told you to do. Mm -hmm. Now you're following a Pied Piper. Yeah. Right off a cliff. Mm -hmm. But they look like your sheep. Mm -hmm. They look like your herd. Yeah. And you didn't listen to the Good Shepherd who told you the path to take. Mm -hmm. That would keep you away from the Pied Pipers. Yeah. I was quite proud of that one, I'm not going to lie. That's that's not bad. That's not bad. And if you you don't know what a Pied Piper is... That's probably um, why I had the whole analogy, because you went off on a tangent on it the other day. um, Obviously, he's a piper, plays pipe. Um, A flute. No. Uh, pied, <laughs> pied just means multicolored coat. A a coat made of patchwork. Uh, patchwork, right? yeah. It would be a solid color, with a solid color coat with different colored patches. Pied. Mm-hmm. That's probably where that entire thing came from. Was <laughs> that that uh, conversation yeah. where you told me everything Story you had learned about Piper. Pied Piper? And I really don't want to hear it again because it was not a pleasant story. I'm not gonna. It's a horrible story. It's an awful story. I don't. I don't. Mm-mm. It's a horrible, terrible story. And they were all in church when it happened. Message him on uh, Facebook mm-hmm. or uh, Instagram for the Wandering Pilgrims page if you want to know more about the Pied Piper. He will certainly <laughs> just, oblige you and tell yeah, you and everything yeah, I will just he send knows. Send you to the podcast that I that mm-hmm. I heard the story on. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a snippet. And maybe this has to do, can relate to the church as well. I think in a version, not all versions, but in a version of the story, it happened on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, he came, there was a rat problem. The Pod Piper came in. They, they didn't, they, they agreed on an amount to pay him, and he piped all the rats out of town. Right? And then they didn't pay. They didn't pay. So he came back dressed as a hunter. And in some versions of the story, it's on a Sunday, and he, while all of the adults are in church, he pipes all of the children out of town. Gotta be careful with the uh, children's church youth group analogy here, which <laughs> there is no precedent for in the Bible. Why aren't the children? My first question here: Why aren't the children in church with their parents? And is it an analogy of culture leading your children astray because they weren't with you learning what they're supposed to be learning? Yeah, that's a um, whole other issue. I could be totally wrong about that version, uh, but I, I don't think that I am. I think there's a version about them. He does it while all the adults are in church. That's a whole other uh, episode. Yeah. We've talked about t- two or three different upcoming Things, episodes. Right, yeah. Apparently, now we have <laughs> ideas. That's no good. That's fine. Um, hmm. We're going to have to decide how far into biblical marriage we go in this episode and when we... Because well, I don't be know honest, if there's it, enough... It, it, is this... <laughs> um, perhaps we'll do... What, 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 I, what I wanted to do was do an episode of the role of the husband 
and one in the role of wife. Okay. Um, that sounds good. Yeah. And then, of course, I want, I want to do one about the things that we personally have changed. Okay, that sounds good. As far um, as our daughter is concerned. Uh, how about before we wrap up, There's if, if you're good with your notes. I know, I'm not finished. Oh, okay. <laughs> you go ahead and finish. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to go through too many episodes without leading to the gospel. That's something that, that I certainly want to do. Um, and I, this is a Adrian Rogers paraphrase. It's not a direct quote. It's more of a paraphrase. Because um, I type really slow. And I get really irritated when I have to <laughs> constantly back up and come, back up and back up. Hey, I made um, it a lot easier for you. Um says that Americans uh, have used the word commitment to replace a much more important word. That word is surrender. If you commit, um, you're in control. The reason Americans like committing so much to things, committing to losing weight and car payments and I commit to this and I'll commit to that, is because you're in control of the commitment. Christ doesn't ask you to commit to him. Mm -mm. He asks you to surrender. Um, The problem with Americans is that they love to be committed uh, because it gives them control. Um, But when you come to the Lord, Jesus Christ, we must put up our hands in absolute surrender. It's not, being a Christian is not about committing to living a biblical life uh, in Christ as scripture tells you to. It is surrendering to it, dying to self. Your fleshly desires and everything that you want recognizing that those things are wicked and that they're not going to get you they're not going to grant you salvation they're not going to get you into heaven and God's word gives you a defined path to walk Um, it tells you exactly how to live now there is Christian liberty Uh, some things aren't expressly talked about and that's where we get Christian liberty from Um, but for the most part most things are covered yeah and it's not about going you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna commit to doing this or commit to doing that Um, it's about surrendering to Christ and have it let a lot, uh, getting out of the way so that the Holy Spirit can do his work through you. Um, listening to John, um, listening to MacArthur, uh, and he asked the question, uh, who lives your Christian life? Who lives your Christian life? Um, and some people would say, well, I do. He goes, okay. So are you taking credit for all of the good things that God did through you? And as it was, somebody else says, uh, well, God does. Okay, so you're blaming him for all the bad things that you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Titus 1.1 1, 1. Um, Paul says, uh, it says, Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. The word that they use here is doulos. Um, That's the Greek word, doulos. D-O-U-L-O-S. I'm sure that's not how it's spelled in Greek, but that's how it's spelled (laughs) in English. Uh, So doulos. Uh, This is translated in most modern Bibles as bondservant or servant 
Um, it's a very light-hearted translation of the word because the word actually means slave. Um, the, grava, the, the gravity of the word slave um, needs to be there. He's, Paul isn't thinking of himself as being committed. He's thinking of him, he's recognizing that his relationship with Christ is that he has no choice in the matter. None. First of all, Paul was handpicked. <laughs> he was picked uh, personally by Christ to be an apostle. Um, but he is a slave to Christ. Uh, he doesn't do, he's not, he doesn't write the things that he writes and do the things that he does in the Bible because he wants to do them. Um, he does them because he's compelled as a slave by Christ to do them. And he takes joy in that. Uh, and he even talks about you know how going back to what I said before who lives your Christian life he, he says he says I died on the crawl uh, I, I was crucified with Christ yet I live yeah. uh, and then he goes on to say but not I yeah my little brain is not big enough to understand these things you <laughs> are trying to tell me but that's what we should want to be as Christians. That's what you strive to be as a Christian. It is, it isn't being committed to Christ. It's being a slave to him. And, and what his word says. Whether you like it or not. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you from personal experience. You read something new. You're not going to want to do it. Yep. You, 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 as human beings, we're comfortable in our lives. We're comfortable in the things that we've built up around us. And our routines. And... And the things that we like to do, it's very, very uncomfortable not, ha it's very, very uncomfortable changing any of those things. Um, the point is to change them. Uh, and funny enough, um, you know, scripture talks about you'll begin to uh, love the things that you hate and hate the things that you loved. Mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly what happens. I can go ahead and tell you right now, I did not change anything about myself. I did not do the changing because I fought it almost every step of the way. Uh, like even now, there's some things where I'm like, you know, I'd really like to do this or I'd really like to do that. And... <laughs> And then I recognize that's not at all what I'm supposed to be doing. Nope. So being able to recognize those things, and, and, and uh, I think as, as Paul says, um, I do the things that I don't want to do, and I don't do the things that I want to do. Yeah. Um, so, so that I know that it's not me that does them, but sin that lives within me. Yeah. Your flesh um, craves sin. It's, a, it, it's addicted to it. Um, pleasurable things, uh, routines, idolatries, and things like that. Um, but first and foremost, you have to get rid of those things. Um, you have to... The, the Holy Spirit, once you're converted will get rid of those things uh, and allow your spirit uh, through the Holy Spirit to <laughs> take control of your flesh um, so that it's not as difficult to not do those sinful things that you once loved doing. Um, The, the question to ask yourself is, do you want fleshly and earthly things or do you want heavenly things? Um, so the first thing that we must uh, do in order to have the best possible marriage that we can is understand that God's plan for marriage 
is the best plan. It's not almost the best plan. It's not, hey, it's a good plan. It, it's the best plan. He's the one that created humans. He's the one that created the, first, the, the whole idea of marriage came from God. So who better to learn from about marriage than the being that created it? Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Did it's, you write jokes? No, well, it's not a joke. Uh, <laughs> the idea is not to commit to anything. Um, don't commit to anything in your marriage. Um, understand uh, that unconverted, you are a lying, thieving, adulterous idolater. Um, and You've been listening to Ray Comfort again. <laughs> you're wicked at heart. So surrender to the Lord um, and repent, first of all. Uh, be converted. Be a Christian. Become a Christian. Um, and once we're truly saved, then we can get. Then we can begin the process of sanctification. Um, and after that, you can begin the process of having a good biblical marriage, as God wants you to. If indeed you're already married, if you're not married and you're listening to this. Um, we can direct you to, um, Paul Washer has a few words to say on the subject. Um, but John MacArthur does think too. about good. the woman or the, the man that you want to marry and is your idea of that an earthly one or a heavenly one? Do you want a worldly man or do you want a godly one? Um, and if you're a converted Christian, then you want a godly one. Um, you want someone who is going to support you in the things that you do. Um, you want somebody that will correct you in the things you need you. correcting you into. Yeah. Because those are, it's easy to support somebody in the good times. It's easy mm -hmm. to support somebody in your comfort zone. It is not easy to support somebody in their mm -hmm. life, especially their Christian life. Yeah. When you have to tell them or in, or help them along mm -hmm. on that journey in a negative. Yeah. As in, you know, I was reading in scripture today about this and, you know, I love you and I see that you have this issue with what I was reading about today. Yeah. Can I help you with that? Mm -hmm. You know, doing it in as loving a manner as possible, not as a point of finger this is your fault, yeah. you're failing at this kind of deal mm -hmm. in a loving manner because it's it's very easy to support somebody when they're doing what they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Who wants to confront anyone? Um, but who wants to have an, a potential argument mm -hmm. with a spouse? Yeah. And, and tr try to you know, give them a helping hand. It, it's hard to do even in a loving way. Mm -hmm. um, but mm. the question then becomes, how much do you love them? Yeah. Do you love them enough to allow them to continue in a manner of sin? If they, well, if I would they say are converted. You, I, well, I would say that... Or do you love them you enough to love help them? them? Um, not as you should. Um, he gives us uh, in Greek, um, and if you, if if you haven't read the Four Loves by C.S. Lewis, uh, read it. It's fantastic. Um, but he gives he doesn't give it in Greek. There are four different types of love. Um, Americans, Western culture, we have this very warped idea of what love is. Well, whenever we hear the word love, we just think romantic love. Well, that's not what love is. And I can prove it even from a secular point of view. So if that's what love is, then you you love candy bars as much as you, in the same way that you love your spouse? I think not. I think not. Um, there's four types of love. Agape, storge, eros, 
and phileo. Agape is the love that God commands us to have for each other. It's the love that he has for us, and it's a love out of sheer force of will. Um, you don't have to like the person, but you do have to love them. <laughs> uh, this is where, where Christ says, love thine enemy, love your enemies. Um, love your neighbors and love your enemies. Uh, it doesn't. He's not telling you to like your enemies. Uh, he's telling you to love them, to treat them no different. Even though they're treating you differently, treat them no different than you would treat your neighbor. Uh, love them out of sheer force of will. Um, share the gospel with them, even though you know that they're going to hate you for doing it. Um, been There's been plenty of people that I've talked to um, and shared the gospel with them out of love, and they have gone off as if I was judging them. While the whole time I was doing it, saying, I'm not judging you, but you just said in your own words that you're blah, 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 under, under the law. Watch Ray Comfort if you don't and know what he's talking about. <laughs> he runs people through yeah. the Ten Commandments and, and goes, so, so you're a liar, so you're uh, such and yeah, such. So you're, a, a, you know. a perfected law gospel presentation. Yeah, he um, does. He does a perfected law gospel presentation. <laughs> it's hard but, to hear. It is it's very hard, hard to, to ask yourself those questions, much less someone else. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to hear. Have you but always obeyed the Ten Commandments? If if you can stick with it, um, you know, and I, I'll tell people that I was like, I, this is going to be rough, but stick with me to the end because there's good news at the end of it. Um, <laughs> but agape, love out of a sheer force of will. Um, Storge is familial love. It's a love that a, a husband has for his wife and a wife has for a husband. Uh, the love that you have for your children. Um, then there is Eros, which is uh, where we An get the... An attraction. Kind romantic of love. Romantic love. This love. is romantic love. Um, but it's very often talked about in the Greek, Eros is fleeting. It comes and it goes. Um, eros is what you feel when you first, when you fall in love. That spark. Um, that spark that you have. That's eros. Uh, and when you've been married for more than five years, you realize that eros comes and goes, um, which is fine. That's that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, and then you have phileo, which is the love that or um, there's a phileo, brotherly love. Uh, and there's Philadelphia. A, there's a, yeah, there's another way that people say it, though. I don't know. Philea. Oh. Some people will say Philea. Um, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Um, uh, this is the love that you have for friends, uh, for siblings, things like that. Siblings, I, I think, would be Storge and uh, Phileo. But marriage is, one of, marriage is the only time that all four of these loves come together in, in one union between two people and subsequently children. Um, people listening listening to videos or, and, or different things where people say, well, you know, people are asking questions and stuff like that, like how do I rekindle our relationship? How do I, you know, I, I fell out of love with my spouse or, or... whoa <laughs> man where'd that come you're from you're really that interested yeah. huh <laughs> i fell out of love with with my my significant other or something like that well i would say to you that you didn't know what love was in the first place and that's not an affront to the person that's just an honest answer you had the wrong idea of what love was just a part of it um yeah, you, you had you had eros down pat. You had romantic love down pat. That's not that's not what a married couple has. Uh, they have that from time to time. We have that from time to time. But most of the time, it's a familial love, and and some a lot of the time. Well, not a lot of the time, but some of the time, it's a love out of sheer will. <laughs> You know that better than I do. <laughs> uh, 
Um, <sighs> in spite of, love them in, in spite of, of the flaws and in, in spite of the fact that they, that they make you angry. Um, if you have children, you know what that is. You love them in spite of the fact that they don't listen and in spite of the fact that they run around screaming like crazy people. Um, <laughs> Most of the time instigated by someone else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when, true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if, if you're having questions or, or anything about like that, about, well, I don't, I don't know if I'm still in love with a spouse or, 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 or then that I would say you certainly need to learn what love actually is in, in a marriage um, it's not romantic love only. which is only which is what culture would, and like, you to believe. would like you to believe um yeah, The Four Loves by C.S. Lewis is a fantastic book that really, really helps. Um, we we signed up with Amazon to uh, help support the channel um, with affiliate links. Mm-hmm. So I'll see if there's a, a link for that, even if there's not um, affiliate-wise. I'll, I'll try to get the link for that book um, and add it to the description. Um, I mean, it's a pretty well-known book, so I think there would be an affiliate link for it. So if you'd like to support the channel and you'd like to pick up that book, I'll put the link in the description. Um, any shopping at Amazon through any of those links will help. Any shopping at Amazon yeah. helps support the channel, which is pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, we're still figuring out all this YouTube. Yeah. How, how um, this stuff Another works. thing about C.S. Lewis, uh, reading C.S. Lewis will boost your IQ. Yeah, you're smarter after you read, <laughs> read his stuff. Um, by at least 10 points. That's not... And I'm not talking just Narnia. Like, he didn't no, just read Narnia. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he read... I don't think I've ever read Narnia. Oh, we're gonna fix that. I've seen the movie. We're totally gonna fix that. We're gonna fix that. Um, that's not no. gonna continue. You're gonna have to read the books. <laughs> um, we'll read them. But... You went over the four loves. Mm-hmm. And... I know most friends, the 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 ride or die kind of friends, mm-hmm. you know, not the fleeting fair weather ones, the ones you really count on in a pinch. Mm-hmm. They're the ones you expect to tell you the truth no matter what, right? Mm-hmm. They're not afraid to pull, you know, they ain't pulling punches. They'll tell you the truth, and you respect them for that. Your spouse should be that person. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't be yeah. afraid to tell your spouse the truth. Mm-hmm. And we also have to learn to give enough grace to a person, especially our spouse, when yeah. they're doing that because they're trying to help us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trying to help each other grow and trying to help each other be better. Mm-hmm. If you're not trying to help your spouse grow and you're not trying to help your spouse be better, then probably need to read a little bit more. Yeah. Now, I just want to throw this in here at the end uh, because this is something that I dealt with today. Um, There was... I have to say this. Somebody's going to get mad, period. So that's totally fine with me. Um, there was a question posed to, well, Pat Robertson, um, in this video that I was watching. Uh, and the question was, how do, the lady, it's a legitimate question. How do I, not, well, not me, but the lady, as a Christian woman, forgive my husband for being unfaithful, for cheating? Now, I paused it. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I do that. And I went, okay. Well, not because I I wanted to answer the question on my own. Before. Before I heard his answer. I'm not a fan of Pat Robertson. Mm -mm. At all. Mm -mm. He's a false teacher. Um, But 
this video I was using as evidence of him being a false teacher to someone who would not recognize that he's a false teacher. Um, but I think it was this was actually featured in the news. Um, so the idea is, is first of all, first and foremost, uh, Christ says to his disciples, a disciple comes up, and was Peter, no. Peter, James, uh, and says, how, how should we forgive? Like, about, like, teach was us about seven forgiveness. Times seven? It was and he seven says, times seven. yeah, he says, should we forgive someone who does us wrong seven times? And Christ says, I say to you, 70 times seven. Oh, yeah. Forgive and forgive as God forgives you. Um, and then he goes on to talk about how if, if you're not forgiving, then he will not forgive you. Um, That's a scary thought. A forgiveness that is forgetful mm-hmm. of, of transgressions. This isn't a, I um, tell you I forgive you and then throw it up in your face in the next argument yeah. kind of forgiveness. Forgive and forget that it ever happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you continuously forgive someone, or someone who, from a second point of view, may, may, you know, may go, well, that sounds dumb. You should know that they're just going to do you wrong again. Uh, well, the idea is that, first of all, it's part of your witness. Uh, secondly, they're not doing you any wrong at, at a certain point. At a certain point, you forgive, and you forgive, and you forgive, and you forgive, and you're going to continue to forgive. Um, All they're doing is hurting themselves. Uh, If they're continuously doing you wrong, that they're they're hurting themselves. Um, There can be instances where they're hurting themselves hurts. Yeah, and that can be dealt with in different ways. Yeah. But if you say you have, and maybe this is a bad analogy, you, you have a... A friend or someone who's always like loan me 20 bucks and they never ever ever pay you back and you keep loaning them to 20 okay. bucks okay. at a certain point you're like okay I'm just gonna keep loaning you 20 bucks like yeah. it doesn't matter to me if you pay me back um, but they're not necessarily hurting you anymore but they are hurting themselves one they're not keeping their word you know and two Whatever they're getting up to that they constantly need twenty dollars, um, can't you know probably isn't good for them either. Um, I mean, there are certain situations that you do need to remove yourself yeah. from because they could also hurt your witness as well. Yeah, but that but, doesn't mean that you hold whatever that is against the person. Yeah, um, and forgiveness is a very hard lesson mm-hmm. to learn in general, very much for less everyone. In marriage, um, but too. second point of that would be for the lady uh, whose husband cheated. You are in the singular scenario in which Christ Himself says that it's okay to have a certificate of divorce. It is the only thing that is permitted. Is in divorce is adultery. You can have a divorce if adultery. End of sentence. I kind of wanna. You know, props um, to the lady for trying, though, to forgive see, but, even in yeah, that instance. Like, yeah, it's a legitimate question from someone who's who's trying. Trying, how do I forgive? Well, Christ says, look, what the answer should have been. Well, let's look at what Scripture says. Yeah. Scripture says, forgive seventy times seven, mm-hmm. right? And be be as a wife, be that meek and humble spirit that God treasures above all else in a woman. And that will be, that will in turn also be a very good witness to your husband who hopefully will convert at some point. I think it was Paul Washer that said there's nothing more. uh, He was talking about if he came home and, you know, he just had a hard day and came home Mm -hmm. and the house, house is wrecked, kids running around, no food, no, you know, just you walk into like a scenario where you're just prepped. Yeah. For an argument. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and, you know, if I walk in and that all happens and I fly off the handle and she rightly, let's be honest, rightly would, you know, in, in most people's mm-hmm. understanding of argument, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, would have a right to argue back. He's mm-hmm. like, we're going to go 
back and forth and, and you know, eventually we'll calm down, go to our own quarters, whatever. But if I do that and I walk in and I pop off and she turns around and is just humble and goes, I know, I'm sorry. Today was a really rough day. Mm -hmm. I had this happen, I had this happen, I had yeah. this happen. And it's just humble about, yeah. humble, open, honest, not holding it against him. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm going to go to my room. Mm -hmm. and, I am horrible. <laughs> and, and probably going to have to pray for a while. Yeah. yeah. And then you, come, or, or go out the front door and come yeah. back in and say, let me redo this. Yeah. You can't argue with humility. No. Um, I also, you know, think about, and I'm, this is nothing to say about the lady who posed the question, but this is one of the things that, that he did say. Uh, he said it in completely, I don't, I don't think, the appropriate manner. Um, is that also like self-analyze what I yeah. want to forgive him what can I do what is there anything that I'm doing wrong that can help the, that I can change to help the scenario yeah. right uh, and he puts it off as well you know maybe if you kept the house up kept the house and the family up enough then he wouldn't want to leave he made well, it her now, fault. Now you're blaming the the you're blaming her for it, um, which mm, no, that's that's not the way to go about it. There's certainly probably some things that she could improve upon in her in herself. Everyone can. Like everyone can, the cheating is he needs to take responsibility <laughs> for that. Yeah. Um. But he talked about. So my the, the the I think the the answer to that question is first what does scripture say? Okay, so in scripture, forgiveness, make humble spirit, be a good witness to your spouse if they're unconverted. And also one of the only times you have a legal right for divorce should you choose to t choose to take that route. I'm not saying that taking that route's a bad thing. If you choose to take that route, she, then she chooses to take that route. She's well within her Christian liberty to do so. His answer was, I'm so tired of people talking about cheating. Listen, men, men are going to wander a little bit. That's just what they do. Um, ask yourself what you could be doing to make him not want to wonder. So what you've done is you've relieved him of any responsibility at all for what he's done. And simultaneously put the blame on the wife. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. That's wrong. That is totally the wrong direction to go with that. Mm -hmm. um, See, I'm still working on only, my meek and humble spirit <laughs> calls. He was not only called out by secular media and all of that stuff for that. He was also called out by, I wouldn't call them peers, but also other popular pastors. Not mainstream pastors, obviously, Yeah. but other well-known pastors. Now, I don't know if any of the ones that we yeah. listened to or anything were involved in that, but there were certainly some people also that they interviewed that were like, no, he's totally wrong in this. Like, this yeah. is not at all how, how, how that question should have been answered. Um, yeah, I'm still working on that meek and humble part. Yeah. I wouldn't have handled that response yeah. well. And if, if, if anyone has an issue with me saying that Pat Robertson is a false teacher, sorry, he's a false teacher. Um, and even if he wasn't a false teacher, um, This is where that scrutinizing challenge and test that yeah. I posed earlier, yeah. do that for everybody. Paul praises, Paul praises the people of Berea because every time he teaches them something, they go home and they study scripture and, and check, they, 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 Fact check him against, in, in, scripture. against scripture every time he tells them something, and he praises them for it. He says that everyone should be like that. You shouldn't take anybody's word. Anybody's word for it. Um, and he's don't an take apostle. our word. Don't take our word. You know, like, so if, really, yeah. like fact check. We're yeah. we're not pastors. We don't claim to be. You know, end all be authorities. all authorities on this. 
we just want to share what we're learning and how we're going yeah. about it and what we found with other people that are yeah. trying. Um, but go fact check Pat Rob Robertson. Pat Robertson. Go, Go go fact check a lot of these yeah. prominent pastors. Yeah, and even if you, even if you want to go to the point of well, well, it's just uh, the media is blowing up what he says, and he cracked a joke, even though it was a bad joke, and like all of that stuff. Then watch more videos. Then then explain to me. Uh, just well, I mean, ex- you can always explain, do that. You have to explain. Okay, how? Why does he associate with people like Kenneth Copeland? Yeah. Whose prosperity gospel word of faith. Yeah, and we're told to not associate with people under any circumstances who are false. If teachers. anyone comes to you not teaching this gospel, do not let them. Do in your not home. let them in your home. And what are? Do not even give them a greeting. And those who do give them greetings share in the evil that they're doing. What are so many people doing when they turn on the TV and that's what they're watching? Yeah, they're bringing it into their home. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot yeah. of people just don't know. Yeah, that's they a, that's haven't a lot been taught to, to do this, mm-hmm. which is something we've What they're come banking upon. on is your ignorance of Scripture. Um, um, they're but, banking on you never having read it yeah. to an extent that you can call them out. The and the simple fact is is if you read this, if you read Scripture, don't take don't take anybody's word for it. Don't take our word for it. Don't take definitely don't take Kenneth Copeland or, or Pat Robertson's word for it. Don't take your pastor's word for it. Don't take Paul Washer's word for it or John no. MacArthur's word for it. Take the scripture's word for it. Take God's word for it. Any good pastor is not going to be mad that you went home. I would hope that they would tell you what they're preaching on before mm-hmm. so you could be prepared. But if for whatever reason that doesn't happen, mm-hmm. I don't know a good pastor who's going to going to be mad at somebody in his congregation that he is supposed to care for and shepherd and lead to eternal life Mm -hmm. that he's going to be mad if you went home and go you know I need to ask you a question because I read what you said and or read the the entire chapter or the entire book with context with what you've said and I don't understand how what you taught on applies or comes from yeah. that scripture. Any pastor that cares about his congregants and their soul mm-hmm. is not going to be mad at somebody he is supposed to care about asking him to explain further if they yeah. have questions. That's his job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's his job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's supposed yeah. to pass, you know, shepherd them along. Yeah. I don't know how much this episode was about biblical marriage. We weaved in and out. Um, maybe marriage, we'll do another one. But marriage encompasses a lot. Y- yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of this is stuff that we've come to through being married. It does. No, here, here's here's here it is in a nutshell. You want to have a good biblical marriage? Be a good biblical Christian. First and foremost. First and foremost. Even if you have the most horrible marriage imaginable. If you have mm-hmm. a good Christian life, yeah. If you if you are a Christian, not a Churchian, not a Baptist, not a Presbyterian, or a Lutheran, a I Christian. Thought, I thought you were going to crack the joke there saying, for a minute. <laughs> I'm not saying that the people who belong to those denominations aren't Christian. That's not what I'm saying. Churchian what I'm saying is, is not a dom- denomination. Is Christian, be a Christian first and foremost and if you want to err towards a certain denomination then that's fine if you want to if you agree more with dunking people than sprinkling them on the head you're well within your Christian liberty to do so Um, Christian first and foremost then the marriage will come but you cannot have one you can't have a good marriage until you become a good Christian. You just can't do it. You can't it. have a good biblical marriage yeah. without being working on yourself as a Christian yeah. first. Well, I, this is true. You can certainly have a, a good secular marriage. By secular world, uh, standard, yeah, world yeah. standards. Yeah. Um, but seeing as the world standard for marriage is not having one. Um, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought you were going to crack a joke there wow. about when you said uh, in in a bat in a horrible marriage. I thought you were going to say something else. I played it through in my head. Oh. <laughs> Made me giggle at a very bad time. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is definitely a topic that's kind of yeah. near and dear to us. Um, yeah, we have changed so much. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> we we like we thought we were Christians, learned that we weren't Christians. Yeah. Thought we had a good marriage, learned that we had a pretty had an good okay foundation. marriage. Yeah. Um had well, a long way to go. We still got a long way to go. Well I would say I would say that we had a, a good we had a an okay marriage, but with no foundation. No biblical foundation. Yeah. Um so any time any time that we argued about anything. Oh, yeah. You know, there was no reference point. We were just coming from our own point of view. Well, we had a lot it. of, uh, and this is probably better for another episode, but we had a lot of uh, world culture influence. Mm-hmm. Um, way more than we thought we did. Way more than we thought we did, especially on our roles. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's something that we should leave for the other two or other episodes yeah. about husband and wife. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're when we get into that, we're not just talking about stuff that we've learned. We're talking about stuff that we yeah. we lived. And, mm-hmm. you know, it didn't work. Um, yeah. And we've changed those things, and it really makes a huge difference. It really mm-hmm. does. Um, but I do... Um, want to say, please, 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 anybody who claims to be giving advice or claims to be pastoring or claims to be lecturing, anything that has to do with Christianity and the Bible, please, 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 go read it for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's your soul on the line. Not theirs. Not ours. Nobody else's. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the way that I look at it as far as marriage and family goes. Um, because, and there's a special place or for me. It, it bothers me very, very much as we've gone on this journey. Mm-hmm. Um, for other Christians. Uh I care about my salvation. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know that you care about your salvation. But I care about my child's salvation. And I can't make her choose that no matter how hard I try. Mm -hmm. But I can do everything in my power as Spurgeon says I will have my arms wrapped around her ankles she's going to have to climb over me Uh (laughs) and everything else I am going to do absolutely everything in my power for her Uh if you are married if you have children Do you think about what will happen to those that you love if you don't follow the Word of God and you don't do what you're asked to do or what you're commanded to do? Do you think about where they will end up or could? You can't make them choose. You can't. But you can certainly do everything in your power Mm -hmm. to help them get there. Yeah. And it just, I see so much feel-good gospel now in people's lives and and go with the flow stuff at this point that it kills me, especially when I see that they're married and they have somebody looking to them to help them on their journey. Mm -hmm. And instead, they're both just happy to go with the flow or as it is. (laughs) It's not, it's not directed towards you. Oh, I'm just you. tired. <laughs> or they have children. 
-hmm. at a certain age, they understand that age of innocence is gone. Mm -hmm. And most of the time we just think of it that way as, oh, yay, they, they understand now they can be saved. Mm. What are you saving them from? Yeah. What is your life teaching those children? Mm -hmm. And yeah. the... Well, say, yeah, that's the thing. Like, you, you, in your role as, as the woman in, in the marriage... Like, uh, being a, a biblical wife will teach our daughter how to be a woman in God's eye, a godly woman. I hope and so. And one day a, I try. I a, fail a every day. And if you're a father and you have a son, you are teaching your son how to be a godly man. Well, you're teaching our daughter um, what to look for in... Well, that's the other thing. It, being, a, being a father... You're setting the example as to what a man is supposed to be. Yeah. Whether that's your intention or not, that's what you're doing for, for your daughter. Uh, so, like, when she comes home and with the sense. rebel rouser, that's your fault. Um, that you didn't set the example that needed to be set. Um, and you can't do that through words. No, it's you cannot it's set an example through words. Um, so, you know, I know that that she's going to grow up one day and she's going to get married. Um, I wouldn't say that the person that I want to walk through the door is me <laughs> at twenty or however old. Um, <laughs> but me, the person that I am at. At the age I am now, most definitely. And that's the example that I want to set for her. This is uh, the example that this is what a man is. This is what a godly man, this is how he acts. This is how he conversates. This is that, this is that example. Um, so that she, when she does see someone walking up with... You know, I don't, I don't want to say long hair. I'm sure there are plenty of good men with with long hair, um, but <laughs> you're just saying that because you shave your when it, when a boy right? walks up to her, um, and you're says, going the opposite route from what you do, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> when a boy walks up to her, um, and wants to pretend to be a man. She'll have, she'll know what a man is, and she can say to him, "I know what a man is, and you're not one of them." To quote Paul Washington. <laughs> um, but that's what that's what you're doing. That that's your your role as a father, or your role as a mother, is to set the example. Yeah. As to the type of person they're supposed to be, the type of person that they're supposed to look for. Um whether it's a boy or a girl. Yeah, whether, and I think that's something your, that a lot of people... your son's looking for a wife or mm -hmm. your daughter is looking for a husband. Yeah. Um, that's something that a lot of people don't think about. Yeah. I mean, I guess um, my, my biggest point with what I was getting at is... A lot of times you have people talking about or, or preaching about or sermons on if they talk about eternity it's always in the positive it's always heaven it's always good yeah. and I'm not saying that's bad in any way but he's not he's saving you from sin the penalty which of that is not only death, eternal death mm -hmm. and separation yeah. in hell. I have people that aren't here anymore that I have to question. Mm -hmm. They went to church. Yeah. And I don't know where they are. Yeah. 
there is a burning urgency or or mm. or I, I don't know the right term I can't make someone choose yeah. nobody can make anybody choose but I don't want to have to wonder mm. wonder anymore about anybody yeah. and the last thing I would want being a parent now it's different mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine something happening to a kid and well I dedicated them when I when they were little or they they took the classes at church or oh, I've or, heard that so much or they're they, they were baptized or they were sprinkled or they were whatever yeah. that's not saved yeah that's not saved that is not. They believed as mm -hmm. in Christ as Lord and Savior, repented, and did everything in their power to walk a Christian yeah, so life. They showed evidence of salvation, and you know they learned about atonement. Yeah, no, this is this is a. I couldn't imagine being a parent, a parent, and being complacent. After the fact. Period. Yeah. Just, just. I mean, that's, that's a thought that has occupied my mind a lot when I'm studying. When That's what I pull from mm -hmm. when I have that little voice going, you can take a break. Yeah. You can take a couple of days off. It won't hurt you. Mm -hmm. It's no big deal. That's, mm -hmm. my, that's my strength quote. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I am not going to give up. Yeah. I can't do it, but for, I can for, do I mean, everything for, else. Yeah. I, 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 the thought of that, mm -hmm. of what that means, it doesn't mean they didn't go to heaven. Uh, uh, you know, that's not the end of it. Yeah. There's an opposite to that. Yeah. You go to one place or the other. And I can't. Yeah. I won't stop. Yeah. I will do everything it's imaginable. That, that very few people forget about is the fact that very... Like it's in red letters. Um, Jesus said it. Very few people. Path is near. Very few will make it into the kingdom of heaven. So if you need motivation, a lot of people use getting to heaven as their motivation yeah. for trying to be Christian. when you're thinking of others and it's because it's difficult to mm -hmm. witness it's difficult to share the gospel it, with people it is. what happens to that person stranger or the person sitting next to you mm -hmm. if you don't are you okay mm -hmm. with not knowing yeah. are you okay with living with with that do you, question do you, do you love them do you love them enough to risk the relationship to and tell share them the truth. and sharing the truth, sharing the, the truth being the, the law and the gospel. Uh, and I'm going to be honest, I, I don't think that it does much good to share the gospel with someone without sharing the law. Like, why do I need good news? It's like, cool, Jesus, because that's happened to me. Like, why... That, like, that's totally cool. Jesus died for me on the cross and for my sins and all that stuff. The whole time, me going, not even considering what my sins were. Did you even know what they were? Like, cool. That means, like, we're saved? Does that mean, that means, like, everybody's saved, right? Like, when, like, like everybody's going to heaven. This, well, that's called universalism, and it's a false teaching. Um, you have to share the law with someone, and that's very uncomfortable. Especially uh, someone you love. It, it, it's just as uncomfortable with someone you love, uh, someone who's a family member, as it is to someone who's a complete stranger you just met at a gas station. Well, um, I would dare say that you can't hold them to your, the complete stranger to the standard. The Christian I, standard without knowing them to be part of the body. Yeah, as well, far as I mean, the sins and laws go. Yeah, well, and there, there's, there's ways around that. You know, you, you, 
to certainly watch Ray Comfort and, yeah. and, and the well, conversations I, he has you, with people. But, but you get what I mean. I mean, yeah, you have I mean, to remember you that know. you have you are privy to this information. That doesn't mean beat them over the head with the, the Bible no. and tell them that they're just awful people. In a very people. loving, very non-judgmental way. Relationships. Yeah, and and the best way to do it, the best the best way that I've seen to do it, and it's had the most success for me, is 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 have them that they're answering the questions. You're just asking questions. Questions are very They're helpful. They're answering it, and in their own words. Yeah, questions are very helpful. We've in, actually yeah. learned that and worked on some questions. In, Maybe we'll do. Yeah. <laughs> in <laughs> my this. own words, I admitted in my own words that I was a thief, an idolater, um, a blasphemer, uh, all of those things. You went down uh, the, many, I the think, 10. Uh, all 10 of them. You had um, been guilty of most of it in your yeah, life. Yeah, not against you, but from before we were married. Um, I, and most, like, let's be honest, that's most people nowadays. It's kind of everywhere. Um, I was all of those things. And I didn't even, it never clicked for me. Like, I knew the Ten Commandments, but it was like, man, cool, more You'd guidelines. Never, you know. You'd never had them <laughs> asked as Never confronted personal. with it. Personal. Yeah, I was never confronted with it. So then I was confronted with it, and I'm like, I, I'm, I'm a horrible person. I am a liar and a thief and all of those things. And what I've been doing this whole time is comparing myself to other people. Um, and not to the Scripture. Compared to, to, like I, I, was t- I was telling someone today, compared to Hitler, I was a saint. Yeah. Like compared to someone who killed six million Jews, I'm a super good person. If people you compare Hitler, if you compare Hitler to Mao, who killed a hundred million, yeah, estimated. Hitler, Stalin. Does Hitler still is six million? Does that look a little bit less than than a hundred million? But or from are a they Christian still? Standpoint, they're they're still, still horrible, wicked people. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what bad they did. What matters is the fact that they that they did wrong, the fact that they broke the law. Um, like Ray Comfort says a lot, like if you stand before a judge and you, and you go, well, are, are you a good person? That, that's, that's, that's the best question to ask someone, period. To First. find out whether they're converted or not converted is, are you a good person? Um, I don't know if this is how everyone would answer, but I would honestly answer no. <laughs> I'm a horrible person. I'm I, I I'm saved by by grace through faith in in Christ alone, uh, but even through the process of sanctification, I'm still a wicked person. I think My probably the best wicked. way to go about it is your answer would be, I'm working on it. Eh, <laughs> yeah, eh. because technically I'm not the one that. I mean, am I technically the person who lives my Christian life? Yes and no. Eh. Um, <laughs> but you have to share the law with someone before you can give them the good news of the gospel. Yes, I, I, I was a, a, a lying, thieving, adulterer, uh, adulterous, idolater, blasphemer at heart, um, and a wicked, wicked person who was honestly self-righteous, and you can attest to that. Um... And I was a good person because I did good things. Works. Um, works. Um, that's that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the opposite of that. Only by grace through faith in Christ alone um, are, you, are you saved. Um, but being confronted with it, how how wicked I was, and standing in front of a court, in, in front of a judge, a just judge, it doesn't matter. How many thing? How many good things I've done? That's not what I'm on trial for. Um, I'm on trial for the bad things that I've done. When you stand before God, you'll be on trial for the things that, for the wicked things that you've done, not for the good things that you've done. And hopefully, Christ will be the one that stands up for you. Exactly. Without, without salvation, in in Christ, there's no advocate. No. There, there's no atonement. There, there for the. I mean, well, there was an atonement, 
But there, there's no second chance. There's no, you're, you're not. He doesn't take on your sin. Uh, uh, he's not your advocate. You, you're not covered with his uh, justification. You're not covered with his righteousness. Um, you're just there before judgment. Um, and having someone alone, alone by yourself uh, before the being that created the universe. And you. Um, and coming to realize that is a scary thing. And a lot of people don't like it. I didn't like it. Um, for a while, uh, uh, I wanted to deny that fact. Um, and logically, if you read scripture, it's just, that's how it is. Um, there, there's no reasoning around that if, if you read scripture. Um, if you don't so, know, you need the law because if you don't know why you need to be saved. That's what I'm saying. It, 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 it means nothing. Yeah. But being in that place, that horrible, horrible place where, where you realize how you're going to be judged um, and then hearing the good news of the gospel, of, of the fact that the same being that created these laws came to earth in, in the flesh as the God-man, as Christ um, being 100% human and 100% God um, and in the person of his son and having the atonement him dying on the cross as an atonement for the sin of the world um, for your sins that you've committed personally it's very very good news Yeah, it's very good news um, and all I have to do to be granted eternal life is to have faith by grace have faith yeah because no one has faith except by the Holy Spirit um, have faith in Christ trust in him uh, comfort says as you trust in a parachute um, trust trust in Christ uh, and then live live out his command live out your life as 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 commanded through scripture um you're not going to be the best at it i'm not the best at it um even even paul admits to not being the best at it and he's an apostle i i, I do the things that i don't want to do and i don't do the things that i want to do um but that process of sanctification is evidence of of that conversion um Becoming more, more and more uh, a godly person. Um, and if you're married and you can walk that journey together, it's yeah. it's going to be infinitely easier, I would think. Mm -hmm. Because you share. Yeah. You share it together. Yeah. And you're hopefully you're not already... on your own one way or the other. Whether you're on your own in a marriage or on mm -hmm. your own on your own. Yeah. Hopefully you're already in a place where, in your relationship, where you can you can say, "Hey, I noticed that you're doing this thing." Well, it turns out this thing that you're doing is actually sinful. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other person can go, "Thank you." You're uh, not always going to want to take it. That's true. But. But if you know, yeah. it, you know where it's coming from, that makes it a little easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not a personal attack, kind of. Yeah. Know, just trying to fight or start a fight or. Mm -hmm. or the other way you can look at it is, do you do you love that person enough? If if you, if you're not willing to share the gospel with them, it is it would be, they're they're walking down the street and you're, you're waving by to them and they step out into the street and you see a bus coming or are you just going to not yell at them? You're just going to let them get hit by the bus? Uh, are you just going to let them walk off the cliff or are you going to start screaming and yelling at them? Yeah. You know, well, my thing to is, get out of the way. Is, do I care more about hurting your feelings now, you being mad at me now, um, us arguing now, it being uncomfortable for me now, or do I care more about the fact that 
I want to make sure that your walk with Christ is as strong as it possibly can be. Mm-hmm. And that you, like, am I more concerned about you eternally? Mm-hmm. Or am I more concerned about right now? Because ultimately, yeah. all of those right nows, whether or not it hurts your feelings, is still about me. Yeah. Because if I hurt your feelings, you'll be upset at me, whether it's mm-hmm. mad, sad, whatever. It's my way out. Mm-hmm. If I don't talk to you about it, it's my way out. Yeah. Whether it's because I've convinced myself of your feelings or not. I would rather you be mad at me for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, being being angry at, at, at someone being angry at you for 70 years. But going through that process of, of conversion and sanctification and all, and all of that and being saved. What is... 70 years of not talking to that person if you can be assured that you'll see them in heaven forever I'm not saying it's not easy no it's really not easy it's not easy at all it hurts mm-hmm. but in comparison with eternity yeah um, it's a blink even a lifetime is nothing yeah So now that we've kind of danced around, that was not a straight... That was not a straightforward uh, conversation Mm -mm. on biblical marriage. Mm -mm. We we Uh, did did tend to circle back around. uh, We we, we did. We We did did a lot of circling. Um, Yeah, we did a lot of circling. There's a lot of donuts uh, in the parking lot right now. Yeah, that's kind of what we Um, do, though. That's why we have wandering (laughs) thoughts on wandering pilgrims. Because we wander uh, around. Wander around. And, and we're then, in the bushes a lot. <laughs> but yeah. we always tend to come back to the main point, right? Yeah, that's true. And there's lots of things sprinkled. Yeah. See, see this is why we point. say we're not teachers. No. We're not teachers at all. We're but conversators. Like, don't take us as teachers. We're, we're not. conversators, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're just we're conversating publicly. <laughs> Pretty much. On things. Because um, the... But if we can share like if, some if, information... <laughs> That helps someone. Here's the funny part. If you think we're putting this on. Like we're not. This like is this totally is what we do. All the time. Um, it's just um, made a little bit more The weird part is that it, it either has a topic that we've written mm-hmm. down. Because there are times when we come to each other with a topic yeah. to discuss. But this is like written down and you took notes and that's not I normal. Took notes. And it made it very awkward for me to take notes. You, you're not a note taker. I'm the note taker. Uh, I'm the one with the notebook over here that has like about 10 pages on biblical marriage. Yeah. I had this um, idea of I'm going to take notes and it's going to be that much better. It's going to make it's going to make it better. It's going to be structured and I can go note for note for note. The issue is no, that not my how your notes brain works. were taken out of like order and like I'd have a thought and then research and write it down and it wasn't in the it just made it weirder so I don't I don't I think I'm done with notes okay that's fine I'm the note taker I might put down the the verses that that I want to use but uh, yeah but uh yeah the the main difference here is that we have this awkward bit of a camera um that we really don't know what to do with um so uh yeah we could definitely use some feedback um and or any help <laughs> uh, or advice on what to do or anything, yeah. check out links in the descriptions. We are working on trying to figure out this thing called Patreon and this thing called merchandise <laughs> and pretty much everything about how YouTube works. Yeah. Um, so well, thanks thing- for bearing with us with all of this. Yeah. And, uh, we're trying to set up the... Yeah, bear with us. We'll get better at this over time, we I'm will. sure. Um, um, but we will put some links in the descriptions, and yeah. there's also um, yeah, the we'll playlists. Also put, I have a lot of um, references for Scripture. Um, that means he's going to do the description, so be prepared. About, it's not all of them, but quite a few um, on marriage and biblical marriage and stuff like that that we'll put in the description. That means he'll put it in the description. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're working on all that, and we're trying to get everything set up. Definitely check out the playlists. Um, we really, really hope that those are a resource for you guys. 
Mm-hmm. Um, check us out on social media. We post a lot of pictures. Yeah. Um, Bellamy likes to be goofy. Yeah. Well, um, she's, she's a goof. Yeah, she is. She's lots of fun. Um, so, and she's very much a part of this. Um, it's mm-hmm. hard for us to incorporate her in these videos when we're not wandering around. Yeah. Um, well, also, she's four and a half, so it'd just be hard in general to have a video like this. Yeah. With her so, uh, yeah, we'll we'll put some other videos up. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> with her, uh, but uh, she's so much fun. Um, but. I don't know what else to add um, other than check out the descriptions. I'm sure I've forgotten mm-hmm. a ton of stuff and I'll probably remember them for them to be added in the descriptions. I remembered something. Ha. Huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, subscribe, and share. Yeah. Um, that's always a good thing. You know, and um, if you came here for a structured conversation on 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 scriptural with scriptural references and and detailing exactly how you're supposed to to live out a biblical marriage and stuff like that. Um, sorry. Um, you're not going to get that here. Uh, this is us sharing our thoughts. And our experiences. And our experiences. And trying to do this all on if our own. If you want the structured element of like how you're supposed to live out a biblical marriage... And what the Bible says on marriage and stuff like that, then I would suggest that you read your Bible. Um, you can also check out the biblical marriage playlist that we've started uh, putting together too. That There's too. Some really good um, sermons. If you're coming from for like structured conversation, like you'd be hard pressed. Uh, this is just us kind of talking. Yeah. Um, so I'm sorry uh, if that's not what you want. Uh, but if you sign up for it, man, you're going to get a lot of it. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, mm. But yeah, this is definitely us in raw form. And uh, yeah. this is... we. I mean, one of the real reasons we wanted to start doing this kind of thing is because we came to all of this... We were lucky enough to have each other. Mm-hmm. But we came to all, all of this on our own. Yeah. We found all the resources. We did all the reading we're mm-hmm. we're still doing all the reading and we're still learning but we know how hard it is to do it alone and we just hope that maybe it helps some people realize they're not alone they're not really on this journey alone you have Christ and and God helping you along the way anyway mm-hmm. um, but there are other people to doing this and and working through this and trying to figure it out um, when we couldn't even find any resources, we were kind of in a desert. Yeah. Here. Um, yeah. Where we are, so we're hoping to pass this stuff along and maybe help some people out, mm-hmm. um, if nothing else. Yeah. If 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 us doing this like helps one person. Yeah. Totally, totally cool with it. that. Yeah. Totally worth it. Worth every bit of awkwardness. Yep. <laughs> um. So I guess. Till next time. Yeah, till next time. Bye bye.